Well guys, the 7800X3D is finally here, and instead of going down the regular review path, I wanted to give this chip a little bit more of a realistic context. And that means using it in a situation where it would normally find itself. And I guess you would say, sort of like use it in its natural habitat. So I decided to go the ITX route here, because when taken at face value, the 7800X3D seems to have a lot going for it in the small form factor market, especially when it comes to a system that's focused primarily on gaming. I mean, sure, it's more expensive than 7700X by a whole lot right now, actually. And it runs at lower clock speeds too. But if the 5800X3D is any indication, that massive amount of 3D Vcash will help power it through games. And the actual system is pretty straightforward too. We're using an NATX case along with ITX motherboards for the X670, Z790, and X570 systems. I'm also using this colorful iGame GeForce RTX 4080 OC GPU. It's smaller than most of those other ridiculous 3.5 monster cards out there, but still massive in its own right. And I think it's pretty representative of the upper end of what most people are gonna install into a high-end ITX system in 2023 if they're building it from scratch. The cooler itself actually ended up being a pretty interesting choice too, because believe it or not, this is something that I haven't really touched on too much. A lot of current ITX or small form factor coolers that are out there are actually not compatible with the AM5 socket. Luckily though, on this one, I actually found a cooler that was compatible. That's the Noctua LH. L12S Ghost. If you're wondering how low profile coolers perform on the Ryzen 7000 series, I actually covered that in a full video. I also decided to include results from a fairly typical high end heatsink, so the Deepcool AK620, in order to get a baseline of how it would perform in a perfect scenario. And speaking of cooling, I think that's absolutely the first stop that we have to make in the X3D journey. Because let's be honest, since day one, Ryzen 7000 series and temperature controversies have literally been tied at the hip to one another. But in this case, things get pretty interesting. So basically what you're gonna see here are the temperatures averaged across 13 games on the X axis, followed by the reaction of each processor on a 10 minute time scale in gaming. And remember, this is being done in a compact ITX case without any outside airflow and with the GPU literally breathing its heat towards the socket area. First of all, there's the 7950X3D, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna be surprised here because it actually stays under the 80 degrees Celsius mark. But believe it or not, that's just the nature of the beast here when it comes to gaming. And the same thing goes for the 13600K in this situation, which runs even cooler. But then we switch to AMD's single CCD design with the 5800X3D and 7700X. And look, this should be a shock to precisely no one who's been following AMD's Zen architecture story. These higher wattage single CCD designs are a freaking nightmare to cool and end up around 90 degrees. The 7800X3D on the other hand is also a single CCD layout, but it actually lands lower than the 7950X3D and eventually right in line with the 13600K. Meanwhile, adding the AK620 pushes things to an even cooler point. And that's really good news for everybody, not just people rocking SFF systems. If we switch gears a little bit here and look at power needs while gaming, the X3D needs just about 61 watts versus the 7700X's 93 watts and the 100 plus watts the 5800X3D needed in the same situation. Also, I have to give some credit to Intel here. Since the 13600K runs ultra cool in gaming despite needing almost 100 watts, but if it's efficiency you're after, the 7800X3D is an absolute champ. So overall, it should be pretty obvious by this point in time that what we have here is a very, very different CPU than what we've come to expect from previous generation AM5 CPUs. It runs super cool and very, very efficient in gaming without needing all those PBO shenanigans. So basically right out of the box. But what kind of actual gaming performance can you expect from the 7800X3D when it's being used in a pretty typical high-end gaming system? Basically, the gaming results can be broken into three pretty distinct categories, with the first being games where the 7800X3D does exceptionally well. 
I mean, really, really well. In most cases, it's right up there with the 7950X3D despite lower clock speeds. And in some rare cases, it can pull ahead likely because of its single CCD design. But to me, the biggest advantage here, especially against the 13600K and 7700X, is the X3D's ability to deliver a lot better 1% lows. So in other words, a more fluid overall gaming experience. Another thing you'll notice here is the higher end air cooler doesn't affect performance in any way since this chip runs perfectly cool with just the Noctua L12S. Then there's a group of games where you'll obviously run into a GPU bottleneck, even at 1080p. And there's very little to distinguish one CPU from another. You should also take into account 1440p, if we were testing at that, would see these even closer. And yet even here, the X3D is able to deliver good 99th percentile frame times. Still though, I'd say that due to the 7800 X3D's overall efficiency, both in terms of power and temperatures, it has a pretty big advantage over a lot of other modern CPUs especially for an ITX rig like what we are using. And then the third category of games are the times when the wheels just tend to fall off. Sometimes because AMD intentionally kneecapped this processor by keeping its clock speeds so low. Because at times it barely manages to match the 7700X and in others it can get trounced by the 13600K or even beaten by the 5800X3D. That's a bad look for a nearly $500 processor on AMD's latest architecture and sporting 3D vCache. So what we have here is your basic yin and yang situation. On one hand, the 7800X3D has the capability to be an amazing gaming CPU. There's plenty of situations where you're going to see it dominating. But on the other hand, there are those cases where AMD kneecapping its frequencies is going to hurt overall performance in a big way. Then there's also some areas where obviously there are still optimizations to happen because these days what we're seeing, especially on these AMD CPUs and on Intel as well, is that the back end software is playing just as big of a role in performance, specifically in gaming, as the hardware itself. And if you run into those situations, well, for this chip, you're paying a lot more money for absolutely nothing. But there's also a flip side to that coin that I want to discuss, of course, and that is what happens when you hit the X3D with an all core workload. Well, we already know, even though it's technically more efficient, the 7950X3D runs pretty hot while the 13600X still hits TJ Maxx. It just takes longer to get there. And finally, the 7800X3D does things a bit differently by taking almost five minutes to hit its maximum temperature, but it still eventually gets there. And remember, AMD set the TJ Maxx on this chip to just 89 degrees. But adding a ton more cooling with the AK620 does help things in a big way. The effect on power is pretty significant too, with the 7800X3D sipping back just 80 watts, which is a massive amount less than the other CPUs here. But you might also notice every chip's constant power consumption is much lower than their peaks. That all boils down to them regulating power input to maintain operating temperatures. And what that leads to are some sacrifices on the clock speed front. To me, this is probably one of the most interesting results in this whole video. While temperatures of all these chips are pegged on the low profile cooler and their power consumption gets cut a bit, because of its overall efficiency, the 7800X3D is able to maintain its steady state clock speeds a whole lot better. That means it can technically make up for some of the clock speed gap with the 7700X in a situation like this while also being within a few megahertz of the AK620 results. And that clock speed discrepancy means overall it will always always lose the 7700X and especially the 13600K in an all core workload situation. I guess the 5800X3D on the other hand, it will always win due to the Zen 4 architecture. And at some points, the gaps between those two is absolutely massive. But in some cases, especially in NLEs that tend to be GPU focused, it doesn't really matter all that much one way or another. All right guys, so here's the very quick lowdown. First of all, if you already have a 5800X3D, there's absolutely positively no reason to step up to the 7800X3D. It is a complete waste of money. On the flip side of that coin, if you are looking 
to build from the ground up a new ITX gaming system, then the 7800X3D might be the ultimate chip for you right now as just a drop-in solution. So no modifying PBO settings or anything else because it is extremely easy to cool, it is very, very efficient, and in the right situations, it can be an amazing gaming CPU. Either way, the 7800X3D is a brilliant CPU for anyone who can't fit a massive cooler into their case, people who care about their electricity bills, or simply anyone that's more environmentally conscious. On average, it can match the 7950X3D, especially in 99th percentile frame times, while just sipping back power. And that's a huge deal. It isn't perfect though. Sure, this thing makes the 7950X3D look like an unbelievably poor value for gamers, but the inconsistent performance makes it super hard to justify paying such a large premium over the 7700X, which is an already amazing option for gaming. In the end, I'm actually on the fence about the 7800X3D because it has the capability to be a dominant CPU. But what AMD ended up doing is they cut back its clock speeds so much in an effort to try and protect their flagship X3D CPUs that are on the market right now. Because this processor with the 7700X's clock speeds would just be dominant. So right now, this feels more like a missed opportunity rather than an absolute clear win for AMD. So anyways, on that note, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this little bit different content and I will definitely see you in the next one. Take care guys.